Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Banner, on how we can get a clay look to our renders. So to illustrate this, I have a character from the Introduction to Character Rigging course. Now, there are numerous ways that we can get a clay look, so this certainly isn't the only way. Uh, but let's see how we can utilize some of the features in Menoray to get a good look very quickly. So to start with, let's see what we're working with right now. So I'll just go ahead and render this out. And as we can see, it's uh, less than impressive. So uh, let's save this off so we can compare to it. The first thing I want to do is to set up some new materials for this guy. So let's come into our hyper shade here and go to create uh, metal ray materials. And I'm going to use the architectural material. So with we, if we use this, if we double click on it, uh, we'll notice that there are some presets up here. So uh, real quickly, we can just come in and apply something like a matte finish preset in order to get a, a nice clay look. Now right now it's gray, so we may want to adjust the color to be uh, whatever color we may want our clay to be. So uh, maybe something like a light yellowish color. So let's select uh, everything that has the blue on it. So I'll come into the body material, right click and select the objects with that material and then apply my new clay material. It looks like the eyelids have a slightly different color, so we'll go ahead and select that as well and assign that. So now that we have that applied, let's come in and render this out again. And as we can see, our render definitely still needs some work, um, but I'm gonna save this. That way we can compare each step of the way uh, when we reach our final destination. And before I actually uh, begin to brighten up the overall scene. Let's come in and duplicate this uh, clay material we had set up. So we'll just duplicate that and give it a slightly darker look just to kind of uh, break things up. And what I'll do is take the material for the eyebrows and apply that as well as applying it to the object in our character's hand just to help kind of break things up a little bit um, as far as the colors are concerned. So now that we've done that, uh, let's go in and create a physical sun and sky to really help uh, give this look. So let's come into our uh, render settings here and go into the indirect lighting tab. Give it a second to load up. And uh, once it's loaded, up at the very top, we'll have our the ability to create a physical sun and sky. So I'll just click Create. Maya will go ahead and set up all the nodes that it needs in order to create that. So let's hop back into our render view. And this is what we had before. If we render this out now, uh, we can see right away we're getting a lot closer to our goal. So this was before and then after just adding the physical sun and sky. Now it's uh, still really bright. We have some areas that are really washed out. Um, so if we come into our physical sky node or if we have deselected that, we can come back into our render settings and uh, just click the arrow here to open that up in the attribute editor. I'm going to adjust the multiplier, the, which will um, basically all these settings that we have for the physical sun and sky, the multiplier is going to be how much that affects our scene. So it's a real quick way to just kind of bring down the overall brightness. So this is what we had before. And if we bring the multiplier down to about half of its strength from before, you can see we don't have those areas that were washed out previously. Now, because uh, Physical Sun and Sky does use final gathering, so a lot of the settings are going to be based off the size of your scene. So the values that I use here may not be the values that you'd use in your particular project, uh, but feel free to play around with some of the values to get the look that you need. Uh, now, one of the really cool features of this, just to add a little bit more uh, detail to it, is that the architectural material actually has the ability to use ambient occlusion directly in that material. So if we select our architectural material here, and if we scroll down, we'll see our ambient occlusion. So I'm going to check that on to use that, as well as increase the samples a little bit. Now, right away, uh, we won't see the ambient occlusion directly in our renders, because we have to actually turn that on here in the render settings as well. So uh, to do that, we'd 
open up our render settings and once again in the indirect lighting tab if we scroll down we'll see our ambient occlusion so I'll just uh, dial that down and turn that on and now with that turned on let's come back in and render this out and we can see uh, with the ambient occlusion now the effect is going to be pretty subtle but especially around the eyes here uh, we're adding just a little bit of extra detail to our render here by using ambient occlusion in our architectural material. Now uh, there is some uh, pixelization going on there so we may want to come back in and up the anti-aliasing quality of our overall render. If we were to save this out and we can see that by increasing the anti-aliasing quality that's gone in there and actually given us a much smoother render. Uh, but it has also bumped up our render time so that's something to keep in mind when you uh, bring up your overall samples, the anti-aliasing, it's going to increase your render time uh, sometimes pretty significantly depending on what is in your scene. So we could go in and continue to tweak our materials or lighting to really get the look that we're going for. Uh, but that's just a quick look at how we can utilize the physical sun and sky as well as the architectural material in order to get a nice clay look very quickly. Now, if you want to learn more in depth some of the features that we can get to get various looks in our projects, check out the introduction to Metal Ray in Maya course.